My name is Matthias Ramirez. I've been working at Sprue for the last nine years. I'm a senior lecturer here and my main interest over the past uh, four or five years has been on the topic of inclusive innovation, particularly in relation to Latin America. Um, so on our visit to Colombia, um, we identified a number of possible cases of what, are, what we would call th um, uh, transformative innovation policy or third frame. Uh, I think one clear one is some of the activities that are taking place in cities to incorporate broader sections of uh, the population of the residents in innovation activity. So we visited Medellin and specifically the activity around Rodaene. Um, it was interesting because there we found that initially there was a program around entrepreneurship, around encouraging fairly high-tech companies to participate in innovative activity. But what they found was that this wasn't really having too many spillovers initially within the rest of the population in the neighbourhoods where this was taking place. And this was creating a degree of resentment. So um, what they did was a, a, a really interesting program involving three things, involving um, fab labs, which is basically making technology such as 3D printing available to people um, who don't have that many resources. So it's making technology a collective resource rather than a personal individual resource. The second one is what they call um, living labs, where the idea was to take technology to the community, particularly to young people, to uh, uh, students, and to engage with what innovation is with young people uh, in areas like medicine and things like that. And then the third one was a, what they called a, um, a business accelerator, whereby th one of the problems that they had was that the, there's lots of local restaurants there. And these people that were going into these uh, entrepreneurship firms were not using the local, uh, the local um, restaurants, they were going to the malls and things like that. So they identified, I think, about 300 very, very small um, eateries and places like that. And they did a program to help them to improve, to broaden out their menu, to improve the logistics, to generally become far more professional. And so, and I think the idea is then to spread that to other types of services. So I think those are really good examples of how you can make innovation more inclusive and more transformative within an urban area. So that's the first example. Um, I think another one is that Conciencias, which is the, um, the unit of government which deals with science and technology in, in Colombia, has had a policy which they call social innovation for some time. It's very interesting because what they do is that they, uh, they go to places, particularly agricultural areas, which are quite marginalised, quite isolated, and then they work with local communities to improve um, to use science and technology to improve problems that they have. Often these are problems such as they don't have uh, uh, electrification, uh, they don't have clean running water, and then they link them up with universities to try to solve those problems. There's two programs. I think one is where they ask the academics, the, te the technical people, to resolve the particular problems. But there's another one which is very interesting, is where they actually ask the communities themselves to come up with the solutions. So it's very much about grassroots innovation, bottom-up innovation, and then they bring in the, academ the, the academics to, to implement the solutions that the people from the communities themselves can come up with. So it's very interesting. And the other thing which is really interesting is that they, they don't have money, they, they invite projects from the communities, they don't have money to fund them all, so how do they prioritise them? They do it through a plebiscite, they do it through a vote, a public vote, where anybody can vote to say what they think are the projects that are more worthy or the best projects. So it's a way of engaging the population also in technology and innovation. I think the third one um, is, a more, is, is what they call Proyecto Oleaginosas, which is a project to use bar technology, so it's a more traditional sort of high-tech technology, um, to introduce biotechnology within agricultural areas to, to improve productivity, competitiveness, to improve the sorts of 
um, seeds that they're producing. Um, but the issue is, is that the areas in which these technologies are being applied are ones where there's a lot of small producers and it could potentially affect people uh, a great deal. So I think it's very important that the way in which this is discussed involves the local population. It shouldn't be just seen as a technical uh, fix. Um, technology that comes from the outside because that can all, that can often be quite exclusive. So the idea of this is that different actors will be engaged, the scientists, the local policy makers, the local populations, uh, and they can perhaps shape and direct the way in which technology is used in a more inclusive way to benefit everyone. It involves learning, it involves competence development. So that's I think a third in, third example. So these three examples give you different uh, views about how uh, the sort of challenges that they have in Colombia and how uh, innovation can be seen in a transformative light.